Valley Fair is the largest amusement park in Minnesota. This park features 125 acres and 8 different roller coasters, yet it's often considered one of the worst parks in the Cedar Fair chain. Sure, it's no Cedar Point or Kings Island, but this is a good park and I'll explain why in this review. Valley Fair opened back in 1976. Just two years later in 1978, Cedar Point acquired Valley Fair. The ownership of these two parks led to the creation of Cedar Fair in 1983, as the name was derived from the first two parks. One of the biggest criticisms with Valley Fair is that the park receives less investment than other parks in the Cedar Fair chain. The park gets new attractions and special events, but their last major coaster was way back in 2007 with Renegade. In the decades prior, Valley Fair had much shorter gaps between coasters, but Cedar Fair has expanded quite a bit in that time including acquiring the Paramount Parks in 2006, and the chain tends to prioritize large-scale additions at their larger parks. For several years, Valley Fair was earmarked for a sizable expansion in the back of the park. The plan was to demolish Excalibur in order to expand the Soak City Water Park. This would have included new slides, a new parking lot, and a dedicated entrance for the water park. However, the local government has rejected these plans due to the site being a floodplain, so we'll see if Valley Fair goes for a different plan in the future instead. On that note, flooding has been an issue for this park. The park's setting on the banks of the Minnesota River offers great views for the taller rides. You also have a walking trail and bike path adjacent to the park that offers some neat views of the rides. But the back sections of the park can become submerged from the river, particularly in the early months of the year. Granted, this back section with Excalibur and Thunder Canyon may not be open if you visit outside the peak season. And on days when these rides do open, the back area tends to open late and close early. If Excalibur is a priority to you, try to visit during the peak summer months to maximize your chances of riding it. Now let's talk about this park's layout. The park is easy enough to navigate, but the layout is annoying. The park forms a long strip. The center of the park forms a loop, and it is also serviced by the Minnesota River Valley Railroad, so this part is pretty easy to get around. But the north and south sides of the park form dead ends. You have Route 76 that juts downwards from the main entrance into the parking lot. This is accessed by a single narrow path. The dead end in the back is much longer though. Off to the left you have the Soak City Water Park, but for the dry rides, once you go past Mad Mouse, you have just one path. This is what you need to take to get to Renegade. If you want to get to Excalibur and Thunder Canyon, you need to keep on going through this tunnel underneath a service road. The park as a whole does look good though. This park is a great skyline. You see massive towers and wild thing from the parking lot, and the latter adds a ton of kinetic energy to the park, particularly from the helix in the Route 76 section. This park doesn't have too much in terms of theming like most of the Cedar Fair parks, but it is clean, colorful, and lively. These are hallmarks of the chain. The park is a cheery atmosphere, and it helps that most employees are pretty friendly too. In terms of operations, Valley Fair as a whole does a good job. The park is often open late in weekends, and I need to give them credit in 2019 for remaining open through a massive thunderstorm. There were torrential downpours and lightning for the first 2-3 to three hours of the day. Many parks would have used this as an excuse to close early, but Valley Fair stayed open until their scheduled 10pm close, which basically gave me ERT for the second half of the day. The major coasters will typically run two trains, but the dispatches are slower than some of the other Cedar Fair parks. The park is among the top 5 in the world for IROC compliance, and the park prioritizes protocols and safety over raw efficiency. That being said, dispatches are still decent enough for the crowds this park attracts, except for two coasters. First, Wild Thing had really slow operations in my recent visit. These Morgan Hyper coasters are usually people eaters with their simplistic restraints, but the load procedures guaranteed stacking each time. The crew wouldn't open the air gates until everyone from the prior train had exited the platform. Then the attendants had to lock and unlock multiple different loose article bins before checking the restraints. Second, Mad Mouse is one of the least efficient coasters at a major corporate park I have ever seen. Wild mice aren't the best for capacity to begin with, 
but this one is particularly atrocious. If you've ridden the Arrow Mouse at Michigan's Adventure or California's Great America, this one is operated similarly. The ride had 8 cars on the track, but only one would be on the main course at a time. I rope dropped this attraction to avoid the posted 1-2 to two hour wait, but I was seated on the ride for almost 12 minutes because it took that long to dispatch the other 7 cars before and after mine. Valley Fair seems to get healthy crowds. Unlike some of the other quote unquote low tier Cedar Fair parks, do not be surprised to find decently long queue lines at this park. If crowds are heavy, the park does offer a fast lane skip the line pass that will cost you an extra $50 to $80 depending on the day as of 2022. This can save quite a bit of time. The worst lines in this park are typically for Mad Mouse and a trio of flat rides. North Star, Power Tower, and Extreme Swing can all develop weights ranging from 30 to 60 minutes. If you primarily care about the coasters, I recommend rope dropping Mad Mouse. If you don't get here at opening, this is a smart one to hop in line for right before close. I would then head over to Wild Thing to get a ride or two before crowds reach it. You should then be able to go to Renegade and have a mini marathon when it's still a walk on. You then will be in a convenient location to get back to Excalibur when that area opens at noon most days. For the coasters in the front half, their lines have peaked around the 20 to 30 minute mark for me, but they typically will have decreased weights as the day progresses. I then like to end my day with a marathon Renegade because it's usually a walk on at this time as well. And if the park is open after nightfall, riding Renegade in the dark is a must. There is barely any light back there. If you want to hit the big three flat rides, I would defer Mad Mouse until close. I would instead start with North Star if you're one of the first ones in the park. Then hit Power Tower and Extreme Swing as you make your way towards Wild Thing. You can hit Mad Mouse on the way back to Renegade if it's still a walk-on, but no guarantee it still is. I have always visited this park with a Cedar Fair Platinum Pass, but day tickets cost $60 as of 2022 if you pay at the gate. You can often save $10 to $30 in advance if you buy online. Then there's an additional $20 fee to park if you don't have that annual pass. And it's nice how the parking lot is right by the main entrance, so you don't have to start the day with a long walk. Now let's talk about the ride lineup. While Valley Fair's coaster lineup cannot compete with the larger parks in the Cedar Fair chain, it is solid. There are two deficiencies though. First, it's shocking this park's only inverting coaster has been and still is Corkscrew. This park could desperately use a new coaster with inversions. It's their biggest coaster gap, and I think their attendance definitely warrants it. Second, the park could use another coaster with a height limit below 48 inches for families. Right now their only options are the Cosmic Coaster Kitty Coaster and the Mad Mouse and the latter's throughput is so miserable that families likely will not want to ride it multiple times. Renegade is the best coaster in the park by far. This great Coasters International Woody features a fast paced and dynamic layout. The first half takes place in a backstage area. You have the usually strong pops into and out of the turnarounds, plus these speed hills that offer great sustained floater airtime, which is rare to get on a GCI. Then the second half finishes with a few turns and quick hills you find in most other GCIs. This ride does have a bit of a shimmy to it, but I still had no trouble marathoning this coaster, as I note in a separate review. This truly is one of the best rides from GCI. The other wood coaster here is High Roller. It's oddly now located in Planet Snoopy, but this was the park's first coaster, and it still has its moments. While the ride looks and feels pretty slow, some of the hills will launch those in the front and back out of their seat quite a bit. This ride is also really darn smooth for a 45 year old wood coaster, and I have a separate review going into more detail. The park's best steel coaster and arguably most popular ride is Wild Thing. This was the first Morgan coaster to open, and while it's not as strong as other hyper coasters, it's still a fun attraction. The first half is good. You have some nice airtime in the first drop in the back, and the second hill is one of the most sustained airtime moments in the world. You levitate out of your seat for 4-5 to five seconds. Then the far turnaround has good speed to it. What kills this coaster is the mid-course trim. This absolutely neuters the return bunny hills, as you barely lift out of your seat at all in them. This is what earns the coaster the dubious nickname of Mild Thing among coaster enthusiasts. 
Steel Venom is one of the few Intamin Impulse coasters out there, and this is the last one that still has an operable holding brake. This feature is finicky and not really good for the longevity of the ride, but it's super cool. It messes with your mind stopping suddenly like that so high above the ground. Beyond that, this coaster's spikes offer positives at the bottom and nice weightlessness at the top, plus you have those scary visuals of going over the edge. Excalibur is a unique hybrid coaster from Arrow. This ride was rumored to be on the chopping block for several years, but with that expansion plan rejected, this coaster should be safe. The ride is short and janky, but it has some power to it. You really get launched out of your seat on the first drop in the S hill. Then that helix pulls some strong G's. I have an entire review in this coaster, and you will not find another ride quite like it elsewhere. Corkscrew is a pretty standard arrow looper, but it again is the park's lone inverting coaster. It's smoother than a lot of other older arrows, and the vertical loop has good force, but the rest of the ride isn't too eventful. See my review for more. Mad Mouse is one of three operating arrow mice. The ride has some flair to it with the bank turns, but it's otherwise your pretty typical mouse. You do have some intense hairpin turns towards the start, and a few mild pops of airtime in the second half. I just don't ride this much due to that aforementioned capacity issue. The final coaster is for kids, and it's named the Cosmic Coaster. It's a nice starter coaster. Cedar Fair Park sometimes will ban adults from their junior coasters if they don't have a kid, but enthusiasts can ride this powered coaster without any trouble if they please. Another gap in this park's ride lineup is the absence of a dark ride. This isn't a flaw exclusive to Valley Fair. Other Cedar Fair Parks also suffer from this which limits how much you can do during a passing thunderstorm. Moving on to the flat rides, Valley Fair is a nice collection. You have plenty of spinning rides, plus a few pendulum rides. There are three flats worth highlighting, and they happen to be the ones that get the longest weights. Minus upcharges, the best flat in the park is Power Tower. This 275 foot or 84 meter tall drop tower offers amazing views of the area. This SNS drop tower isn't the most intense though, but the turbo drop side does have a sudden drop that gives a quick burst of airtime. North Star is a bit shorter than Power Tower, 23 stories tall, but it offers similarly great views. This Funtime Starflyer has a good cycle, and you also get a pinch of force as you're spinning high above the ground. Extreme Swing is a supersized SNS Scream and Swing. The airtime of the Max Swing is great. But note how I said swing and not swings. Scream and swings have super short cycles to begin with, but this one is extra short. Only ride this if it has a short wait for that reason. For kids, you have the sizable Planet Snoopy area with over a dozen rides for the younger guests. Kids could spend hours here bouncing from attraction to attraction. Plus, they can meet their favorite Peanuts characters. Then a few of the flats and observation rides scattered about the park outside this area do have low height limits to accommodate them. Lastly, let's talk about the water rides. You have two in the amusement side. The Wave is a Hopkins shoot the chute with a zippy drop and a soaking splash. Then Thunder Canyon is a really fun rapids ride. This one is a scenic course and you can get absolutely drenched from the trio of waterfalls and a few of the big rapids. Just note that the water, which likely comes from the nearby river, really reeks. You also have the option to visit the included Soak City Water Park. I have only visited the dry side, but there looks to be a nice mix of water slides. You have some tall speed slides, plus a few other slides more sued for the family. Moving on to the food options, most of the food is your standard amusement park fare, but our meal at Minnesota Eats was fantastic. We got a delicious, albeit heavy, Monte Cristo sandwich with these ginormous tater tots stuffed with cheese. I highly recommend this place if you want to eat while inside the park. So do I recommend Valley Fair? Now it is towards the bottom of the Cedar Fair parks for me, but that's more a testament to how strong the chain's larger parks are. So yes, I recommend Valley Fair. This is a good park. It's the best thrill park in the Minneapolis area. Renegade alone makes this park worth visiting for enthusiasts, especially if you love GCI's work then the park offers more than just coasters for families and kids, especially if you're also a water park lover. And this is all paired with a clean and inviting atmosphere. 
How much time you'll need does depend on your interests. If you only care about the coasters, you probably only need a half day here. I know plenty of enthusiasts who have paired this with the Nickelodeon Universe theme park which is roughly 20 minutes away in the Mall of America. But I prefer to have closer to a full day here because there are some non-coasters worth experiencing and I do like to have time for rerides in case things aren't complete walk-ons. I really hope this park gets their long overdue coaster in the near future because the park and its attendance really seem to warrant it. So those are my thoughts on Valley Fair, the largest amusement park in Minnesota. What are your thoughts on the Cedar Fair Park? Let me know down below. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.